Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to be doing a match preview for Saturday's game away at Southampton. Before we get into it though, as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel please. We're making some real progress now, so keep subscribing, keep liking the videos and we'll see where we can get to. Let's get straight into it then. My thoughts on Southampton. They went 1-0 up against Spurs and then somehow fell apart and lost 4-1, whether that's because Spurs are really improving now under Conte and the signings that they've made, or whether it's because Southampton are struggling. You saw at the end of last season that they had a bit of a dip. Um, this is their first game at home. They could have the fans behind them. It could give them a real boost. Will Shea Adams make an appearance? Because we've been linked with him. Apparently, according to Phil Hay, there's not a lot in it, but... We wanted to sign him previously, we've been linked with him again. Could he pull out a blinder of a performance? They have got a few players missing. We know that Livermento's missing, Walcott's missing. Nathan Teller's just gone to Burnley. They haven't got Armando Breuer. He's gone back to Chelsea now. But they have got James Ward-Prowse. And we saw in the game towards the end of last season, the 1-1 draw, that he is lethal from set pieces. That's not a surprise to anyone. So we do need to be careful around the box to not give away stupid fouls. Jesse Marsh saw that firsthand last season. Now he knows what would happen. So I'm sure he's gonna get into them to be careful around the box. My lineup prediction now, this is the 11 or the squad that I would play against Southampton. We have got a few players back now. Cooper is back from injury. Sinistera is available, Jesse Marsh said. For sure is available and Dan James is back from suspension. So it's unlucky for some of the young players to be missing out. For me, it would be Somerville, Gabby, Gray and Kjelda to be replaced by those four players that I mentioned. And I've also put Joel Robley on the bench instead of Christopher Klaassen because Jesse Marsh said in his press conference, Klaassen has to earn that number two spot. But as I said, I feel like Cooper, James, Forshaw and Sinistera will come onto the bench unless something has changed between the press conference and match day. Now, there is a bit of friction going on at Southampton at the moment. We saw a tweet reported that the players aren't on Hassan Huntel's side at the moment. Some of the players in the dressing room are shocked that he is still here, that he didn't get sacked over the summer. So he has lost some of the players in the dressing room and ideally this would be a perfect time for Leeds United to face Southampton. They lost their first game heavily. There's no cohesion, there's no spirit in the dressing room. They want their manager gone. There's poor morale. So really we've just got to go, stick it to them, attack, press, apply constant amounts of pressure and they will crack. Attack them and take our chances. And like we did against Wolves, use our subs well. So that when our players do get tired, we can just take them off, bring someone else on and go and go and go and go. It's gonna be really hot as well. So we're gonna to need to use our subs well because players will get tired quicker in the heat. They might get dehydrated. And with those experienced players that I have put back onto the bench, it will be good to have them for the game management if needed. As I said, we shouldn't give silly set pieces away around the box because they will punish us. And if we don't do that, I think we should be fine and we should win this game. But we have seen before that when it's an obvious should win game for Leeds United, we don't make it easy for ourselves. They're not so easy in the life of Leeds United. So it would be a very Leeds United thing to do with all that's going wrong with Southampton as well to for us to lose this game 1-0 in the 80th minute to a James Ward Prowse free kick. But I'm not going with that. I've got faith, I'm confident that we are going to win this game and I think it will be a 2-1 win to Leeds. I'm not 100% convinced on us defensively. Um, it can look a little shaky at some times. Llorente scares me, I'm not convinced about Llorente still. Whenever he has the ball or if it's one-on-one -on -one with Llorente, I'm not confident. And with Pascal Stroik at left back, I'd much rather have him at centre back because he is a beast. But he did okay there against Wolves, so if he has another performance like he did against Wolves, we should be okay. I would much rather have Stroik and Koch as centre-backs and then a real left-back in there, but I don't think we're going to get a real left-back. I think, I think the transfer window might be done. However, they are, as we've seen with Dan James and Rafinha, very opportunistic when it comes to transfers. So someone that's not available now could come up later in the window when we pounce and get them. But I am, as I said, confident we will win this 2-1 to Leeds United. I will be joining 
Dan from Noxon FC on a live watch along. So if you haven't subscribed to him, go and subscribe now so you don't miss out on the watch along. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and whack in the comments below what you think the score is going to be. Is it going to be an easy victory for Leeds? Is it going to be difficult? Do you think we'll lose? Are we underestimating Southampton a bit? Let me know and I will see you in the next video. Peace.